drat, it appears one of the reels has come loose. I, I do apologise. Well, in the interim, if you would like to watch some actual play of They Came From Beneath the Sea, I can put that on for you. How does that sound? If you're not interested in the explanation of the rules for They Came From, you can skip ahead the 8 minutes 8 second mark. If you're not interested in character creation and hearing about the characters in play, skip ahead to 19 minutes 54, where you can get straight in to watching the playthrough of a They Came From Beneath the Sea scenario. I hope this will make up for the disruption to your viewing. <laughs> Welcome to our actual play of They Came From Beneath The Sea. They Came From Beneath The Sea is a tabletop RPG by Onyx Path Publishing that will be on Kickstarter on December the 18th, if it isn't there already. And it's a game of my devising. I have run many playtest sessions of it already, but this is our first one that's being recorded. I am joined by Jenna. Hiya. Mike. Hello. And Simon. Hi. And they are going to demonstrate to you some of the kinds of things players can get up to in this tabletop RPG. We'll be speaking to them specifically about the characters they constructed for this session, but before we do, we're just going to go through some of the setting and rules. They came from is a 1950s B-movie, sci-fi movie extravaganza of a game. It mixes equal measures of farce with horror, science fiction with humour. And... Indeed, a director, the name of the GM in this game, can take it to whichever degree of seriousness or stupidity as they like. This game definitely has a vein of humour throughout, but it is up to the players and the director to stress how much humour they actually want. We have very much taken the mindset that you can't dictate what is funny to the group, only the group can decide what that is. So hopefully this game that we play will generate a few laughs, well hopefully, I'm sort of praying, and uh, demonstrate to you how fun the game of They Came From, from can be. So the setting is 1950s America, if you would like to imagine the kind of America that is depicted in the movies of that time. You have strong-jawed heroes, you've got plucky journalists, you've got grizzled survivors just come back from the Second World War. Uh, but there is also aliens, of course, after all, they came from beneath the sea. And there are many aliens in this game known as threats that are invading our coastal... Uh, towns, villages, communities. Sometimes they're even emerging from lakes and rivers. You just can't tell. Whatever the case is, they came from beneath the water and, in the title, beneath the sea. The game itself uses the story path system. The story path system is D10 based. Uh, so, you have a 10 sided die, and for every point you have in a skill and an attribute, you roll a D10. So, for example, if you wanted to wow someone with your winning smile, you might use the number of points you have in persuasion, add them to the number of points you have in presence, and roll that many ten-sided dice to get your successes. Successes are eight and above. Simple as that. Every die that is rolled at eight and above is a success. Things that can complicate that or enhance that. There are, in this game, enhancements and complications. Enhancements tend to be things like, that are environmental or perhaps a special, let's say, prestigiousness your character may have in a certain task might add enhancements, therefore granting you automatic successes on a roll. And conversely, complications might make a roll more difficult. You may have to roll more uh, dice to succeed than you would on a task that is a standard difficulty of, let's say, 1, 8 and above as success. Hopefully that makes sense. We also have the rules that are very specific to They Came From Beneath the Sea that tie into quips and cinematics. We'll be seeing them in play with any luck, but this is a very much a feature of They Came From Beneath the Sea where your characters draw cards at the beginning of the game. In our case, they're on post-it notes. Simon, could you hold one of yours up to the camera? You might be able to pick it up. We'll be taking a photo of them at some point as well. You draw these from your character's various quip decks, of which there are six in the game. And if you use those quips at appropriate, nah, not necessarily appropriate, entertaining points during <laughs> the game, your characters may gain various bonuses in the form of modifiers to dice rolls. 
if you are then successful on top of that, you gain various other advantages, like for instance being able to uh, use a cinematic for free, being able to store three dice for adding to a dice roll in the future, or the like. Uh, we'll get into that as the gameplay goes on. Cinematics, though, are an important part of the game, and cinematics, which I, again I will show you a photo of if I'm not doing so right now in the edit, are meta powers. A lot of games treat meta gaming as a dirty concept, something you shouldn't see at the table, but in They Came From Beneath the Sea it is very much vital to the game that the players get to direct what's going on at the table. So, like a B-movie might have, the cinematics we have in this game are bad dubbing, a cheap set, and a missing scene, or scene missing. Bad dubbing basically allows you to dub over what aliens are speaking, what people are saying if they're speaking a foreign language and your characters don't know the language. The players can basically direct the game based on whatever they think is interesting by giving the dialogue. Cheap set allows you to smash through a wall, break a laser pistol, do what you like, uh, as long as you are treating the set in which the characters are playing as cheap. Scene missing, let's say your characters are in against odds that they cannot possibly prevail against, and so you insert a missing scene. Your characters then appear elsewhere. You can never directly refer to what happened in that missing scene. You can make vague allusions to how you escaped, perhaps. But the idea of the missing scene is it is your get out of jail free card. How to activate cinematics without using quips. This is the last rule we'll focus on for now. Well, you may have noticed there is a bowl in the middle of our table. And for our case, is it shrimps or prawns we've got in here? Foam shrimp. Foam shrimp, okay. Uh, foam edible shrimp, as Simon will now display. There we go, I hope they're edible. Uh, if you fail your roles in They Came From Beneath the Sea, if you choose, let's say, to accept a failure to make the story more interesting, you can contribute one of these counters to the writer's pool, which is where our cinematics are sat. Cinematics have different costs depending on the weight they have, the power they have. You can spend those writer's pool points to buy your cinematics and activate them at that point. Simple as that. You can also use them for things like re-rolls, but we'll probably use them for cinematics to display how they are used. Um, we will now go into the characters at the table. We'll speak a little about their archetypes, the way they're built in terms of skills, attributes, ambitions, and origins, the, the story path, the paths of that system, and then we will get on with the gameplay. Jenna, tell us a little about your character. Okay, my character's name is Randy Banjo. Randy Banjo? Yeah. Randy Banjo. Um, uh, what is Randy Banjo? Randy is a failed country and western singer, um, inspired by videos I have seen yes. uh, on the internet. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Uh, What's his archetype in this game? He's a mouth. Um, what is a mouth? A mouth is someone who uses their presence and their um, command of their language to inspire others, to uh, intimidate others. So most mouths that have appeared and they came from Beneath Sea playtests already have been plucky journalists, occasionally failed actors. You're one of the first failed country and western musicians we've seen. <laughs> um, what is Randy Banjo's uh, origin and ambition? Uh, so I'm a adventurer. Um, I like to travel around. Um, as soon as I get pushed out of one place, I go like a lone wolf to the other. I want to. I want to essentially spread my singing seed. <laughs> Lovely. To the to the to the masses of nineteen uh, fifties America. Yeah, okay, and uh, so your various paths, your archetype, your origin, and your ambition define your skills, the skills that you start off with. Um, we're not going to go through all of the skills on your sheets, but what do you excel in, and what kind of thing would you say your character particularly lacks okay. in skills and attributes? Okay, um, so my uh, character's particularly empathic. I thought I could really bring that in with my songs. It's... You know, Will you be singing for us in this session? I 
let's let's see let's just see let's just see what happens shall we yes um i try to be persuasive um i am quite good at close combat um with my trusty weapon what's your weapon uh well i have a a very exciting guitar oh. that <laughs> What I'm lacking in in this in this uh, in my character is composure, and so uh, if anybody kind of gets in my way of my you know of my aspiration to be a country and western singer of the world, um, they're going to feel the full force of my guitar, and you know having some points in close combat, uh, hopefully will will. Uh, Come into force in this game. You might win, get, uh, earn a platinum record by the end of it. Who might knows? do. Yeah. How many guitars has Randy Banjo been through in his quite career? Quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few. Okay. Yeah. I mean, usually I'd say one a town. Right. One one a town ratio there. Yeah. Um, so I usually go for the cheap guitars. Yeah. Not very cost effective. No, but you go for a cheap guitar. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't matter. Just get a, get a new one. So you have some trademarks on your sheets as well. Trademarks are your character's signatures, and if you use your trademark successfully in the game, you can take directorial control over a scene, uh, which means you can basically narrate how it ends up. What are your character's trademarks? Uh, so I've got four uh, on my sheet. Uh, the first one is "You won't forget me." I'm unforgettable as a failed country and western singer <laughs> and uh, that is going to be one of the trademarks I'm going to use to persuade people you're not going to forget me probably not no um, I've got you're only jealous of my talent <laughs> which will come into force when my dreadful composure uh, kind of points come into play um, I've got improvised melee massacre and we already know that that my guitar will will probably uh, feature in that. Mm -hmm. And I've also got um, well, I do have points in pilot, um, yeah. but I thought for my kind of for, for my for my character for Randy, um, I thought he was more kind of horse oriented <laughs> than, <laughs> than, than than car or yeah. other so um so your trademark was hot rodder yeah but i thought that was a bit too technological for me so i've gone with hot farrier um i can whip those Horses. horseshoes up good yeah. and proper okay <laughs> and yeah, uh, you've never sounded more british <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right jenna well thank you very much um and we'll see how Randy Banjo does. We'll go over yeah. to Mike now. Mike, so you are playing a scientist. I am. What's his name? Professor John Engelbert. Okay. Uh, he is a very typical, raised in the military, father was probably a colonel in the Manhattan Project, mm -hmm. introduced him to a love of atomic energy, mm -hmm. the grand future that was foreseen in 1950s America, flying cars, you know, radioactive disintegration, death rays, that kind of thing. All good stuff. Absolutely. Um, he is basically the scientist who knows everything, uh, or at least he believes he does. Um, so he is looking to find that next cool scientific discovery that will make his name and allow him to move on in his career, onwards and ever upwards. So that encompasses your archetype, your origin and your ambition. You're a scientist, a military brat and your ambition is promotion. Absolutely. And these also impact your attributes and skills. Where do your, well, does your character excel and, let's say, suffer? <laughs> so um, intellect is obviously a big part of him. Uh, that's his highest attribute. Um, and tied into that, both enigmas and science are, are strong skills for him. Um, he's got a bit of a command and empathy, he has very little integrity, it has to be said. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd be willing to sacrifice almost anything to make that next promotion. Um, he is probably not the, the nice scientist, in a, he's not the heroic scientist in a 1950s B-movie. Okay. He is the one who does unfortunately know how to solve the problem, but probably people aren't going to want to involve him in solving that as it moves forward. Okay, so we can expect him to betray the rest of the group. Uh, betray the is probably a harsh word. Um, but, but, but possible, yes. <laughs> and what are his trademarks? Uh, well, uh, tying into much of that, I have, uh, he is always the smartest person in the room. Um, he is constantly deluging people with streams of jargon. 
Um, he does have a bit of a talent for destruction. I mean, he is a part of the, uh, the military industrial complex, and there's probably a reason why they keep paying him, as obnoxious as he actually is. Uh, but he's also, and he's also, also always on looking for the next step. They're tied into various skills and attributes that we'll see as they go on. I do also have a little device in my pocket that I haven't really decided what that do, it may in fact actually given the state of 1950s technology it may be in the boot of the car mm -hmm. um, uh, it is atomic powered something TBD um, but um, we'll figure out what that is yeah every character has tropes in this game something cinematic uh, Randy Banjo had a few such as his uh, something that will self-destruct that's gone undefined and the ability to defend himself with keep your hands off me because he's such a celebrity and <laughs> Professor John Engelbert has the atomic pa powered something yes uh, the ability to say Eureka and solve a puzzle just like that, and a secret bunker he can retreat to. Clearly I've been divesting the military industrial complex of various funding to build my own network of secret labs. Okay, uh, that just leaves us with Simon's well, character. We finally got here. <laughs> uh, no comments on the camera crew right now. <laughs> uh, Simon, who are you playing? I'm playing Susan Jennings, the housewife, uh, crumpet before she was married. Knee crumpet. Knee crumpet. Knee crumpet. Susan Jennings, knee crumpet. And what is her archetype? Well, she married young to her childhood sweetheart, and one day he unfortunately died in a horrendous fishing accident, was washed up on the shore, crumpled, betentacled, all horribly mutilated, and she is determined to find out what actually happened to her husband. Ah, so that's her ambition. She was a suburban by origin. Oh, very much so. And uh, that would make her an everyman. She uh, really didn't have much special about her. She was just one of the gals growing up, but uh, now she's out for revenge and determined to bring down whatever caused the horrible accident of the very unsafe workplaces of 1950s America. America. Fair enough. And uh, where does she excel? Well, being an everyman, she's a little bit more of a jack of all trades than the other two characters. She's tried to cover a little bit more of all bases. She used to run track back in school. She still kept reasonably fit, and uh, well, she she knows how to uh, keep a house in order and uh, also how to uh, acquire things. You know, she can uh, do a bit of sleight of hand if needs be. Um, she's quite good at manipulating people. She's uh, managed to get herself on the homeowners committee of the cul-de-sac where she lives and will happily threaten anyone that uh, doesn't do what she says with, uh, you know, various bylaws and sanctions from the homeowners committee. You know, you can't have those dustbins out there. You mm -hmm. can't have your mailbox that close to the road, etc, etc. But uh, yeah, rather than being too specialised, she's tried to cover as many bases as possible. Okay. And what do we know about her trademarks? Well, she's very very proud of her home and uh, you know people never treat it with the respect it deserves so she's more than happy to shoo people off her porch you know throw whatever kitchen implements are required hit them with a broom whatever to get them off of her porch off of her land and how dare they come in here trampling mud through uh, she's on the homeowners committee she will threaten anyone and she she's a little bit self-important when things come along and uh, she's quite happily to utilize her social social standing when needs be um, while she is quite dainty and feminine, she's also not soft, you know, she's seen the horror of her lifelong partner mutilated on a beach. She can take far more punishment than initially looks, and uh, she's also very good at upstaging parties that uh, if it isn't up to her standard, you know, a few sly words, a thrown martini glass, and uh, she can ruin a party pretty damned quickly if required. Okay, is there anything else you want to tell us about her? Well, she does have one slight disadvantage, or advantage. She is the president uh, and treasurer and secretary and undersecretary of, of the Randy Banjo fan club. Um, currently, its membership is only one, but she is working on expanding that and uh, has been for the entirety of his career rather unsuccessfully so far. But she, she does have all of his um, single uh, and album... <laughs> Uh, she's probably the only one that have bought them, but but she's very pr very proud and uh, very looking really forward that he might be coming to the town today. That uh, she, she's trying to roll out the uh, welcome parade, but not many other people seem that excited about this mega star in her eyes coming to town. Well, thank you very much, Simon. We'll see her in play. And we're back. 
So we went over a number of the features on the character sheet and a few more things to note. We spoke about things like aspirations that the players want to achieve. Achieving your aspirations during the course of a story path game like this one allows you to earn experience. So it's very much on the players to achieve their characters' aspirations as a unit so they all gain experience points. Also, something that is unique to They Came From Beneath the Sea is the way injuries work. Namely, and in simple terms, the more injured your character gets, the more dice they get to roll, at least until the uh, last-ditch effort point of your character's health track. The reason being that in movies such as this, the more grizzled and scarred your characters are getting, the more heroic they are likely to be before they finally give themselves over to uh, some last-ditch attempt and die tragically and heroically. I assume it's called the die-hard rule. Uh, we've got just a flesh wound. <laughs> That'll leave a scar. Uh, these are the various levels. Uh, they, they're all named uh, distinctly. So, do any of the players have any questions before we get started? No, I think we're ready to crack on. Okay then, so we have Professor Engelbert, we have... Susan Jennings. Susan Jennings. Knee Crumpet. Uh, knee Crumpet, <laughs> let's not forget. And we have Randy Banjo, and we will get started. On a beautiful Saturday morning in the coastal town of Denton. It doesn't matter which state Denton is in. And the... Only bus is rolling into town in the morning with Randy Banjo on board. He's obviously been driven out of the last town he was trying to perform in. Um, we can decide for what reason as the game goes on. Uh, the familiar DJ, Alec Quick, is broadcasting over the radio. He's just finished playing the latest Jerry Lee Lewis track. And... He's got some startling news. He breaks in with an emergency news bulletin. This is an emergency news bulletin. I have some very exciting news for the for the people of Denton. Um, by exciting, I mean deeply tragic. <laughs> uh, it is uh, it is to my sorrow, uh, my my alarm, that I must uh, announce that the uh, Gunderson, Anderson, and Smith families are currently missing their patriarchs who were out fishing at night last night. Their boat has not returned. Whilst uh, we have not received any reports of uh, waves or storms that might have toppled their boat in the night, it is very possible that something may have occurred that has driven them off course. All we can do is hope and pray that they return home safely with a fine catch. We are, of course, all supporting their families. They have been informed. The Coast Guard is currently on the lookout for Mr. Gunderson, Mr. Anderson, and Mr. Smith. Now I'm going to play for you some Nat King Cole to take your mind off of the uh, horrors of sea uh, in this quiet fishing town of ours. This is DJ Quick. And he starts playing something with a beat by Nat King Cole. I'm not sure Nat King Cole really did music with a beat. But uh, this one definitely has. Maybe it's just Maybe DJ Dave. Quick doing this. Uh, he's in... just hitting the bucket that he's sitting on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't imagine he's. Uh, this is the most popular radio station, but in Denton it might be. Denton. Yeah, I think it's the only radio station in Denton. Uh, Denton is your archetypal 1950s American coastal town. You've got your diner, you've got your drive-in theatre, you have your military base just on the edge. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> high school. High school, of course, yeah, within uh, sight of the military base. You uh, will likely have one long thoroughfare going through the centre of the town. Uh, it probably hasn't changed much in the last hundred years, except the storefronts are slightly more glamorous and glitzy. Uh, there's going to be youths driving around in their hot rods with their hair <clears> slicked <throat> back. I know, uh, the knee crumpet family is horrified by this <laughs> behaviour. Especially since your husband uh, died, leaving you... Uh, to fend for myself. To fend for yourself against these ruffians. Yes. Uh, but we'll get to you in a minute. We'll uh, deal with Randy Banjo, who is coming in on the bus. The driver pulls over at the only stop in Denton. That's the sound the bus makes. That's not him just exhaling <laughs> at you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to... This is Denton. Lovely, thank you very much, and I will get my guitar and all my bags and I will shuffle off the bus. Hey, are you some kind of musician? Have you not heard of the great Randy Banjo? 
I've got a record out, you know. I, I can't I can't say that I have, Mr. Banjo, sir. Oh, well, you you wait. One day, everyone around here will have heard of Randy Banjo. I very much doubt that. Uh, we've got our own DJ. Uh, he plays all the big city music. Oh, well, big city, big schmitty. Well, you told him. Yeah, I did. I glare at him in a kind of... He's been so rude to Randy that Randy's Randy's pretty pretty annoyed. He's pretty affronted by the the obvious diss. Well, the bus driver. has he been giving you a bit of lip uh, on the entire journey? Well, I've been sat at the back of the bus strumming away. Yeah, and he just keeps turning the radio up. Yeah, it's rude, really. Yeah, he, he obviously doesn't recognise true talent. No. He, you know. <laughs> that that that's. Quite likely. Yeah. You know, why would he want to listen to the likes of Jerry Lee Lewis and Nat King Cole when you can have the one and only Randy Banjo? With a live performance. Live performance. Live, performance. live bespoke performance. On a bouncing bus. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm sure that sounded glorious, but the bus driver's having none of it. He pulls away from you, out of sight, down the road. Uh, Deliberately puts his foot down <laughs> on, on the accelerator yeah, and yeah. at the same time. Diesel smoke pours out of the exhaust. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yes, yeah, so you get a mouthful of smoke and fumes. And I think oh, this sorry, is gonna... actually, I wasn't actually meaning. No, no, <laughs> I, I'm more than happy for you to make Randy Banjo's day a little worse. <laughs> I feel like that. Randy. I feel like at some point that will come back to hurt me. Yes. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Randy coughs. Um... Is that your brother? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I cough and uh, and worry that that the. the that might tarnish my beautiful singing voice. Oh, smoke's good for you. You smoke fish and it preserves them, so smoke is clearly good for you. Oh, uh, mm. yeah, I didn't think of that. Well, you've been dropped outside the local diner, Crystal's. Crystal's Diner. Crystal's Diner is what it's called. All right. Well, there's nothing else along this beaten track, so while... There's going to be a bar, but this is the morning. Uh, it's All unlikely right. going to be open. Uh, you might be able to shoot some pool later. Okay. Or go down to the beach, see, uh, maybe do a live performance on the coast. Oh, that that draw in the crowds, won't it? I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I'll go into the diner. I fancy a milkshake. Ding a ling a ling, says the door <laughs> as you go through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the lady at the diner, uh, working the the bar. There's no one else there. Um, it may have even just opened. She's, of course, wiping it down as people in diners often do. Yeah, cleaning out glasses. <laughs> and um, you see there's a jukebox in the corner. Uh, there's several empty tables in booths. Uh, there's a long bar with lots of steel stools at it. She says, Why don't you take a seat there? I can get you the uh, chef's finest. Oh, lovely. Well, tell me, that jukebox, is it uh, in working order? It certainly is, sir. Uh, it just takes a quarter, oh, and you get three songs. Oh, lovely. I'm Mavis, by the way. Hi, Mavis. My name is Banjo. Randy Banjo. Is that your real name? Yeah. No. Yeah. You were christened that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's what I'm known as. That's the only name I'll need. I ever. can't say as I've heard of you. Well, I've got a song out. I'm a, I'm a country and western singer. You may have heard of some of my tracks, like the magnificent Randy Banjo and Randy Banjo the Stupendous. You sound more like a clown. <laughs> uh, why don't you check on the jukebox, see whether any of your songs are on there. <gasps> I'll go make uh, make you some waffles. Oh, lovely. And, uh, I get love you, a bit of waffle. And get you a uh, milkshake. What flavour? We do three. Oh, I'll have pistachio. We don't do pistachio. Oh, I'll have... It's going to be the three obvious ones. Yes, strawberry. <laughs> I love strawberry. Yes, you get a strawberry milkshake. Okay. But... I'm going to go and have a look at your jukebox and see see if my single's on there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're having a uh, flick through the various tracks on the jukebox. Uh, I'm going to actually make you do a roll for this. Okay. Um, just to get some dice rolled. <laughs> right. Let's go for a... Oh, let's see. Hmm... I think we're going to go for technology and intellect. Do you know how to work a jukebox? <laughs> in, well, in the usual course of affairs, watchers, 
This kind of thing would be a simple task you wouldn't need to roll for, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to see if Randy Bandhu knows how to press a button. I feel like, I feel like there's already a lot of negativity surrounding Randy Bandhu, and it's really a disappointing. Um, so I've got a technology score uh, of, of zero. I have no points in technology. Okay. Um, I, I do I have an like... intellect of two, so that's something, isn't it? I'm going to give you an enhancement. You get one automatic success because there is a button clearly marked play. as play. Oh, lovely. Okay. So, All right, so, so that's two, roll. Two, yeah. six, two dice. Oh, one six, but one eight. So. One eight. Okay, so two successes in uh, with your... Pressing a button. Enhancement. <laughs> yes, you have managed to press a button as oh. you um, as you find a Randy Banjo track. We'll get back to you in a minute. <gasps> you find Randy Banjo the Stupendous, which wasn't your most popular hit. Well, you've not had any hits. It wasn't your most popular song. But it's refreshing it's to find yeah, it, it on the jukebox. Be, it being the song you'd sold one of. Yeah. As opposed to Clearly two. to this diner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so who put it there? That's a mystery Ooh. to be solved. Meanwhile, we have Professor Engelbert at the military base. Clearly turning up for work in the morning. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to a day of exciting scientific discoveries. Um, Working as on the weekend. Yeah, as, as, a work as it's a Saturday. There are certain experiments that, from a health and safety perspective, lack so the 1950s is with its <laughs> control of plutonium and uranium. Actually, I'm not sure they've technically got plutonium at this point of the year. No, not that the public knows. Not that the public knows about, but clearly I am on the edge of um, scientific endeavours Sanity. in radiation, <laughs> that too. Yeah. Um, and so clearly there are some experiments best carried out on a weekend with no witnesses or other humans around. Unfortunately, well, although most of the lab assistants... The boss is going to the, be here, The boss he? is, of course, going to be there. God damn it. Uh, he doesn't go by the name Professor. He considers himself a practising scientist. Dr. Eisenstein. <laughs> I see you have chosen to work on the weekend, Professor oh. Engelbert. Uh, accent is nondescript, he's from somewhere in Minnesota. <laughs> yes, What's his good, passport good, says? Good yes. morning, sir. You're in early. <laughs> I am the boss here. I can be in whenever I like. I was not challenging that, it's just hard to see you in here over the weekend. It sounded like a challenge. Okay. It was not meant as one, sir. Which experiments are you working on this uh, fine Saturday morning? Right out on the edge of science. Atomic power. Batteries. Atomic batteries to power. You do have an atomic I device. I do, I don't know. You? Yes, on your I, power I am figuring out... What kind of atomic device? I feel my atomic device probably needs charging. Oh. It's a 1950s atomic device. It probably <laughs> runs out of power somehow. Well, Eisenstein doesn't know this. No. <laughs> Alright. Well, perhaps, uh, perhaps I could be of some help. Knowing that you are just performing an experiment on the edge of science does not narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> on the edge of mad science, perhaps? Well, perhaps. Uh, you mentioned atomics? Yes. Indeed. I have a, a little experiment I would like to show you. Oh. He says, and now... <laughs> He says. <laughs> <laughs> in a strangely threatening way. Yes. Indeed, sir. It is in my private lab. Come follow me. <laughs> he says, meaning science. <laughs> Very well. I feel like I have to follow him now, given the possibility of a, uh, of a scientific the discovery. Open. Yes, curio yes. curiosity. Curiosity has never killed anything. No. He takes you through to his private lab. Only the best scientists are taken through to there. Wow. And he shows you a line of petri dishes. <laughs> And test tubes, there's a Bonson burner going, one of those things that goes buzz between them. <laughs> Bing! Yeah. B? Uh, you know those are uh, two... Uh, a those are, generator. Yes, there you go. It's a, there's a Van de generator in there for no... So not a jar generator. of bees. There's a, no, there's a Faraday cage with some bees in it. Right. <laughs> so Atomic powered bees. Yes, well, maybe later. Mm. With maybe when I finish. Yeah. The Petri dishes are lined up. They each have a different uh, element, elemental symbol. Ah. You're going to make me roll to see if I understand the basic periodic table, aren't you? I am, you? and I'm going to have to fast think about um, which periodic <laughs> table symbols, knowing that there is, uh, there is technically a, uh, I guess, doctor of chemistry at the table. Uh, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure I can think of one of them. Yes. That is isn't unobtainium. <laughs> unobtainium. Uranium? Uh, well, okay, let's go for it. Let's do an intellect and science. Intellect is... One of my good ones, 
You have five dice. One dice. <laughs> I get five dice from insects. I'm kind of hoping that as a scientist, I also put some dice into science. I would really hope you've seen a periodic enough, table at least one. And strangely enough, I did. I put three into science. Mm. So I have a grand total of eight dice. Okay. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I'll, I think I'll take that success. <laughs> yeah. I'll also take the failure that slipped out my yeah, hand. Well, so, yeah, um, yeah. But these vampire requiem dice don't tend to be terribly friendly to the rolls. Well, they. Whew, look at that. But today they are. I would have given you enhancements. You don't need it. Four oh, you clearly go. That's hydrogen and helium and lithium and carbon and so on. <laughs> they start going through the entire song. Uh, but no, that's uh, that's potassium in that one that he's pointing at. Okay. You recognise it from the big K. See, ah. I know. Yeah, I know my chemicals. Okay. So there's, uh, there's clearly are they, are they? Is it perhaps a group of chemicals that are if more they reactant? Yes, yeah, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't put them in a dish with each other. Yeah, um, and you wouldn't generally have them outside of a closed-in lab either. All and or, or water nearby. No, indeed, and there is a big beaker of it. He says. What I need you to do is dip this dried seaweed in the water and then see how it reacts with the chemicals, especially if exposed to multiple chemicals in a row. <laughs> it is the most cutting edge of science. It's uh, indeed. Or just a job you don't wish to do. Well I But I do work for you comment. and you I do work for you and you do pay the bills. I will be behind the screen observing <laughs> the results. I'm, I feel he like gets I need, his clipboard out. <laughs> I feel I need to look for a long pair of metal tongs. Do you have a next of kin, Professor Engel? <laughs> uh, there, there is a long pair of tongs. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, and gloves. Good. And goggles? Yeah, he says, use those gloves. <laughs> to, um, let's see. <laughs> empathy? I think you've got em empathy there. I do have empathy. Good lord. I have uh, one dice empathy. We'll go for empathy and I think we'll go for... Presence. Mm, I was thinking cunning. It's a quick witted where uh, you catch a glimpse of an expression on his face. Can I have some enhancements from the... Of the camp 1950s way you played the uh, you played the villainous scientist who appears to be setting me up for something. I'm sure. From Minnesota. <laughs> yes, he's from Minnesota. He, uh, yes, that that that, that, accent, that, that accent is well known. In yes. Minnesota. Yes. All right. Uh, I'll give you an enhancement to that. You get one automatic success. Awesome. However, the, diff the difficulty is two. <gasps> so I need two. Yes. You need one success. <laughs> cool. There's yeah. two, three, four successes! Uh, you believe there's something inside fishy. Inside the glove. Uh, yeah, there's something fishy <laughs> something about the glove. inside fishy. that glove. Yeah, and it isn't a lab trick where there is actually a fish inside <laughs> the glove. <laughs> well, I will clearly, you know, picking the gloves up, knock them on the side of the uh, table just to make sure that you wouldn't want anything to be inside the glove before I picked it up. Uh, um, no, there's... Nowhere near the reactants or anything like no, that. No, but you but... do see that there is an incision in the glove. Oh, oh these are not... Yeah. Doctor, these are not safe gloves. He pushes the microphone. Drax, you use a different glove. I shall use different gloves. I shall go and get a pair of gloves. Be, I shall be but a moment. I go and get some from my lab. Mm. You can see that Eisenstein is disgruntled. Yes. Oh. So you return, and preparing <laughs> to perform the experiment. Well, he does pay the bills, so... He, he does. He allows me access to uranium. Mm -hmm. I mean... Allows might be stretching it. So we Doesn't go, question. We move to the Jennings household. Yes. Uh, knee crumpet. Knee, knee crumpet. crumpet household. Um, are you, are you um, increasingly using the name crumpet since the loss of your husband not that long ago at uh, sea? I have stopped correcting people when they call me by my maiden name, yes. Mm. I, I'm not actively going... I, I feel it would be a disservice to my husband, even though he has passed, to forget that I am a Jennings, but also... My previous identity is coming to the fore as well, that I, I am a woman by herself and has to stand up for herself these days. That means you're not punching people in the face quite so much when you're called the Jennings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. But still, the house is very empty since... What was his name? Tom. Since Tom Jennings... Well, he didn't go missing at sea. He did wash up eventually. He did. But the local coroner did advise you not to identify his body. Did you? I did. Oh and dear. I, I have been fixated on what happened to him because. How did seaweed get inside him? How, how did that happen? Why was it stuck to him in such a strange manner? Mm. 
They said it was a shark attack, and it clearly wasn't a shark attack. No, sharks don't strangle people with seaweed. No, they don't. Anyway, I'm rattling around the house. I've got the radio on in the morning, trying to make a bit of noise. By myself, it's a bit quiet otherwise. And uh, I'm worrying about my uh, friends, the Gundersons, the Andersons and the Smiths. Well remembered. I am uh, making some heartwarming casseroles to take round. And half of it is to give me something to do and a bit of company on the weekend. And half of it is, everyone knows in a time of crisis, a casserole will solve. For breakfast? Yep, breakfast casserole. Breakfast casserole. What's in them? A lady never gives away her baking secrets. But okay. there's definitely some form of possible sausage. Well, it's at this point you hear over the radio <laughs> DJ Quick uh, referencing the exciting news. Um, sorry, tragic news that, uh, yeah, these um, three people still haven't been found. Uh, it's an hour has passed his initial broadcast. His tone is considerably more grave. And he says... Uh, the, uh, the happy music that I started the day out with is no longer appropriate. Uh, so we are going to be listening to increasing amounts of... Think of a 1950s musical artist with, who has somber tones. More Nat King Cole! <laughs> so we'll be listening to some, yes, Nat King Cole. All day, a Nat King Cole marathon. At least until my shift ends at 11am. Right, well... That sounds like an even better reason to get out of the house and not put myself through this. So I'm Not gonna, again, he did this last time. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to get a, a big casserole made up, divide it into three dishes, put some foil over it, and we'll, we'll get out of the house and go see how the other families are doing. Tell them not to worry, that I, I'm sure what happened to my husband isn't going to happen to their husbands, and that nothing can be that terrible at all. Uh, which household do you go to first? Uh, I think we'll go to the Gundersons first, that uh, I occasionally look after the Gunderson children. Uh, I planned on having children myself, but obviously with... Uh, there's, still, there's still time. There's still there time. is you still might time. Find, uh, a new Tom. I might do, but I don't think I, I could ever really love another man. Well, fair enough. You, but, go, you head to the Gundersons with your casserole. I do. Mary Gunderson answers the door when you knock. Good morning, Mary. I thought, in the state you must be, cooking should be the last thing on your mind. I brought around a casserole for you and the children so you didn't have to worry about lunch. You could, uh... She's swept away by your kindness, your warmth, uh, and asks you to take it through to the kitchen. I do indeed do so. I uh, take it through and uh, pop it on the side and... Uh, after Her the... kitchen is much bigger than yours. Harry Gunderson was a much better fisherman than your husband. Well, Tom. I try not to dwell on that. Although, you know, she does uh, ask if I want a drink, I'm not going to say no in this, this lap of luxury surroundings. No. Uh, I, had to, uh, I had to send the children away to their grandparents. Uh, oh. I, I, they can't see me like this. <laughs> oh, it will be fine, Mary. You know what you need is just a little drink to help calm the nerves. But after what happened to Tom... Sure, everything will be fine. All that seaweed. <laughs> a, a, a little drink in your system will just help calm the nerves. Your husband's going to be absolutely fine. You, my Tom was out there by himself. He's out there with Mr. Anderson and Mr. Smith. They've got each other. They'll look after each other. I told them they shouldn't have gone out night fishing. They kept saying they'd seen these lights out and they, they didn't know what it was, but they was only out at night. And they, they said they had to go fishing for it. They, they thought there was... I don't know what they thought that there was out there. I said it was probably something military and they shouldn't get involved. And now they haven't come back and I was right. They're probably just running a bit late. They've probably got the catch of a lifetime and just took a bit longer than normal to haul it in. Everything will be fine. Drink your brandy. At As I, in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> make sure mine is sort of topped up a little bit higher than it's... Maybe uh, taking the glass with you. Yeah, well, <laughs> Not another two houses like this. To yeah, I'm a one-income household. I'm uh, not turning down a free drink, especially when I can pour it myself. Okay. Uh, she sips at the brandy. Uh, oh, oh! I don't know how you managed once Tom, well, once Tom met his end. Oh, we soldier on. That I know it's what Tom would have wanted. That, uh, but no need to dwell on things like that. Your husband is going to be fine. He'll be back in no time. I'm going to go see Mrs. Anderson and Mrs. Smith. Oh, oh, but, but uh, I'm sorry. Before you do, I, I was helping out at the diner this morning. <laughs> I was helping out at the diner this morning when I heard the radio broadcast. I was just helping Mavis clean up. 
after the night before, you know, some of those slicksters were in just messing the place up last night and she needed my help. And then when we heard the radio broadcast, I just ran all the way home to, to get the kids up. Uh, I probably shouldn't have left them alone at home, really, but we've not defined how old they are, so it should be all right. <laughs> they shouldn't be sending child protection services after me. Uh, either way, I think I left my handbag there. Oh, well, if you wouldn't mind taking these casseroles round to Mrs. Anderson and Mrs. Smith, I'll pop down the diner, pick up your handbag, and by the time you're done, I'll be back with it, and it'll be one less thing to worry about. Thank you. Thank you. You're such a good friend. I know. Mrs. Jennings. <laughs> Have another wee nip and we'll finish this and then be on our way. A busy mind is a calm mind. Okay. Uh, so oh, off. you stumble out of the <laughs> Yes. Off Mrs. Gunn's he goes <clears throat> as you make your way to the diner. Yep. The world seems strangely blurry. <laughs> <laughs> so you're wrestling with the jukebox. you found your song. Yeah, I'm so happy. How that. does Randy Banjo the Stupendous go? <laughs> it goes. We know what's coming. <laughs> okay, that's, that's enough. That's enough. That's just the start of it, though. Okay. It's uh, um, so. <laughs> can't get worse. You said that you get three goes with a quarter. Yeah. So. You can play the same song. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, I'm not going to let. I'm not going to give somebody else the airtime, am I? By the second one, Mavis is looking at you curiously. The fact that you've chosen. You know, you can choose a different song each time. This is my song. She says, "Handy." This is mine. Passing you your waffles. Miss Mavis, this is my song. It's great, isn't it? Uh, no, I can't say I've ever heard anyone playing it before. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, I, can't, I can't say I've heard anyone playing it before. Uh, it's certainly got a unique tone. Yeah, it's it's unique. It's well, as the song says, it's, it's stupendous. It's ahead of the curve. It is ahead of the curve. It's mm. it's revolutionary. It is. It'll inspire a generation. I know. As, or only by existing. As Mavis is talking to you and your second playthrough is coming to an Start end. Start to strum along with the song and give it a good... In ding -a, -ling a ling comes a very wet man. Okay. Is it raining outside? No, it's very sunny outside. Oh. He's slapping his wet feet on the floor. He's wearing waders. He looks waterlogged. He's even got a bit of seaweed hanging over his uh, right ear. How far away are we from the sea? Or in you are. This is a coastal town, so you're so within we're about ten minutes walk. Okay, but it's still a walk. It's still not just directly outside. Um, directly outside is probably better. Let's go for that. All right. You could probably walk out of the diner, and you just take a cross the road. Few, yeah, cross the road, walk down the cliff. There's steps carved into it. Okay. Not just actually repel oh, down the whoop. cliff. <laughs> okay, that's a bit strange. Beach parties in this town require some. Hey there. Awful noise, he says, and takes the seat next to you. Well, that's rude. This is my song. He looks remarkably pale. Knee dairy, he says, and he grabs your milkshake and chugs it down. Well, Mr. <sighs> well, Mr. <sighs> I think that's very rude of you to drink my milkshake. I paid for that. Well, I will. More. More dairy. Mavis, this man, yeah. he, he's... Oh, Mr. Anderson, what are you doing here? Uh, we heard on the radio that you were lost at sea. Need more milk. Oh, dear. Mavis, I think uh, perhaps you should get this man some milkshake. He has drunk mine, so uh, if I could also have another one, that would be... You're coming, too, coming right up. Mr. Anderson, you look a uh, hell of a fright. Should I call your wife? No, turn music off well that's this is this is good music i'm telling you it's not even a, an opinion it's just fact ah. listen to it listen to the listen to the voice as the third playthrough reaches its crescendo <laughs> he climbs off his stool picks it up and hurls it at the jukebox shattering ah. the glass mavis ducks behind the counter screaming and it's around this time you will show up but before you do, we'll go back to the lab. You're now safely in your safe gloves and goggles. <laughs> safe gloves. My goggles, because yes. I suspect he's thorough enough that he would have mm. done mess the goggles. In fact, I'll bring a set of tongs back 
from my lab as well. To make sure you didn't pick up the fake chocolate tongs. In fact, actually, I'll go to somebody else's lab, pick up the tongs from their lab, and then use those. Okay. <laughs> All right, you are yes. performing this bizarre uh, experiment yes. of dipping wet seaweed in various... So seaweed into Potas water. Yes. Potassium. Reactant. <laughs> potassium. I'm assuming we've got potassium, sodium, yes, uh, various cesium. other eums. Yes. Eums. Yes. yes. We're, we're looking That's at what all metals. metals. That's yes. what they're called, aren't it? Then they're no, eums, no. aren't they? All right, we'll do eums then. Yes, yes the eums. 1950s America. 1950 yeah. eums. 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 Uh, he's taking notes each time and saying, are you picking up any odour? Uh, is the seaweed burning? <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> yes, I'm. <laughs> oh, that's rank. Uh, yes, oh, usually we would have performed this within the tank, but I needed you to inhale the fumes. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I shall waft them in his direction. Uh, he's behind a screen. That's, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I am registering my protest <laughs> at his point by wafting the fumes in his direction. Uh, now, I'm going to make you do a... Um, mm, let's think. Let's go for... Choose the two things that give me all the dice. See, I was going to say a stamina... Uh, so the things that give me the least amount of Yeah, dice. I was going to get something like um, stamina, athletics, but um, <laughs> if you want, you can choose to fail and get a... Uh, well, the right now, let's, let's do it. How many successes would I need? Uh, three. Okay. <laughs> so, given that I am going to fail anyway, probably. I feel like I shall... <laughs> Only probably? I'm impressed. Yeah. It, the rules of this game allow me to get three successes on two dice. Um, I will choose to fail. I will... No, that's <laughs> not a choose. To, okay. All right, so one is added to the writer's pool. Yes. I. My regret is rising already. You feel... You, I don't know I'm doing uh, Dr. Eisenstein's <laughs> voice for this. You feel something uh, strange stirring inside you. Uh, you feel almost ready to pass out. Which isn't that shocking, really, no. uh, given the fact that you're uh, mixing water with highly volatile metals. <laughs> and seaweed. And seaweed. Uh, um, yeah, that can't help. Uh, doctor, I, I have to say, I, I hope you've got enough data for your experiment. Ha, ha, how are you feeling, uh, Professor? Like I'd like to vomit. That is perfectly normal. There Good. is a uh, dust bin over there. Like I need a, a drink of some well, sort. Well, you also have a sink, I suppose. This is a lab. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, possibly. Yes. I, I, I suspect that the vomit will happen. Um, you are turning a little green around the gills. Oh. I think. I think it is. <laughs> I, I, I think. I think it is fine that you uh, leave now. You exit the laboratory. I shall do so, and I shall. Is, when you say he's behind a glass screen, is that? Mm. A glass screen that uh, that has gaps around the outside. Uh, you would have to exit this lab and go into his. Uh, I shall. I shall. The uh, gas is not going to reach him. No, of course not. I'm just feeling like the need to throw the burning seaweed through the door. Oh, you can air. take it out with you if you want. <laughs> if you're feeling particularly distracted. Well, I'm, I'm feeling particularly. It's just seaweed. <laughs> but I'm feeling particularly set up. It has to be said. Okay. So, uh, do um, you want to do it? Yes. Okay. Um, so you take. No, no, don't! Don't do it, he says. I'm going to do it. Anybody with that accent deserves to have some strange, smoking, smelling seaweed. Um, I would make you do dexterity and athletics for a good throw. Uh, I'm just going to make you do dexterity. Because I don't actually have athletics. Exactly. So. Um, you only need to get uh, one success to slap the body of seaweed across his face. And there we uh, go. No, he says, as the seaweed clamps to his face. I shall be seen later, <laughs> Doctor. Ah! Maybe you should give us the notes for your experimenters. Abusing your employees. He didn't slap you across the face with burning seaweed. <laughs> I think HR is going to be giving you a call on Monday. <laughs> you you leave the I have, atomic, I have an atomic powered device. Yes. I'm sure that HR will leave me alone. Uh, you maybe HR have an atomic powered <laughs> HR department. Yes, um, you leave Eisenstein screaming on the floor of the lab as you decide to knock off early for the day. Uh, <laughs> leave him, just just go away. I'll I'll um I will phone as a, as I'm leaving the building because I feel not at all guilty but somewhat responsible because <laughs> I am. Yes. Um, I shall pick the phone up and say, um, "Hello, security, security." Oh yes, I believe Dr. Eisen has a problem in his, you know, private lab. I can hear horrible screaming, something like that. I, it's one of his experiments again. Yes, I then, think. as you as you're saying to security, you hear a trudging behind you. 
Okay. Doctor Eisenstein is um, standing in the doorway behind you, hulking, and oh. yes, he is <laughs> oh, okay. lurching up. And um, in fact, security, something seems to have gone terribly wrong with this experiment, and you probably want to get here quite quickly. I should hang uh, up and leave the building. <laughs> well, he's uh, he's coming after you. Good. He, he's <laughs> stalk, striding after you at uh, speed. Am I getting the impression that he's Professor! It's <laughs> hard to tell the difference between him and Norman. That and Norman. <laughs> Might be a good opportunity to quip. None of them really. Are he you? starts charging after you. Don't! Well, I'm running. Actually, I'm not going to stop to quip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, you, you need to I'm, stop to quip. This is the, a B movie. I'm the scientist, and <laughs> it feels like. Um, Yes, Professor, I will return the notes on the experiment tomorrow on Monday when I come to work. And I will be leaving. <laughs> that isn't one of your quips. It's not, but I couldn't <laughs> figure out how to make my quips work with the situation. And I felt like just generally leaving is more appropriate to me at this time. You run off towards the car park. And there your will car. be many chances to use the quips. There actually. will. And the Doctor isn't far behind. He is sprinting after you at an ungodly speed. He's... Sedentary and old and... Usually, but he's looking distinctly green of power and uh, a bit slappy and wet. <laughs> okay. How does someone look slappy? <laughs> okay. Uh, do I know broadly where the security... Uh, yeah, you have to drive through there. Okay, am I going to be able to get to my car and start You'll be able it to and get drive. In. Well, that's the question, isn't it? It, it is the question. Mm. Or would I be better off just running for the security gate? You tell me. In the hope that they're coming this way because I phoned them and alerted them. Well, uh, it's a military base. Find a tank. <laughs> it's not that kind of military base, unfortunately. I thought all American military bases were that type of military uh, Private base. Private Bryant on uh, security it was actually exiting his booth when he sees... Uh, I am... Um, my God, I don't know what's happened, but he seems to have gone mad, private. Are you running towards the private, though? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> this, is a, this is a distraction. Always run towards privates. Uh, the private uh, shouts, um, Both of you, stop where you are. Uh, I will stop once I'm past you and you can deal with him. He um, goes for his rifle. Okay, I'm running. Well, I'm obviously not running towards him because I want to run. I don't want him to shoot me. I, mm. I'm quite happy with him shooting whatever the heck. You need serpentine. Yes. As you keep as you keep running, uh, you hear the crack of gunfire, um, but the <laughs> entry to the military base is far behind you as you sprint, gasping, almost tongue lolling out of your mouth. You're so desperate to get away. Uh, I'm gonna. Ask, I'm not gonna ask you to roll for it. Uh, this is a great exertion for a character such as yours, who is by no means Being physically <laughs> able. <laughs> Frankly, whenever I stop. I'm collapsing. Yeah, basically, I'm going to apply a complication to you now on any physical actions you take from here on out. Basically, the difficulty is going to be increased. For physical activities, yes. plus one difficulty. Mm -hmm. That makes a great deal of sense, given that I have just run for my life. All right. Um, but what you do have, you, you almost feel the need to warn people. And Absolutely. The biggest uh, communal place in town is, of course, the diner. <gasps> Um, where all three people in town are. So, you'll be getting there very shortly. The alternative would be the radio station. Yes, but... Uh, you could nobody, nobody listens to that. <laughs> you arrive at the diner just to see Mr. Anderson throw his stool through the jukebox, his bar stool. Well, first takeaway is obviously as I'm walking up, I can hear the jukebox from outside. And it's awful. Oh, no, it's not awful, is I it? I am slightly excited that someone else in town has finally been converted to banjoism. Banjoism, I love it. Uh, the, you know, as president uh, and number one fan of the fan club, to suddenly have a, a potential second member is exciting. Mm -hmm. Somebody special to take on the role of secretary. Well, yes, I need a treasurer as well. And then some philistine cuts it off. And uh, in such a violent manner, this is a good, hard-working town full of good, hard-working people. What nonsense is going... Oh, it's Mr. Anderson? Yeah, and he looks at you and shouts, Need dairy! Wah! And he charges for you. I am going to take a quick step backwards and close the door. 
Oh, okay, I like that. Um, do you want to utter something pithy at him? Um, let's go for... Now I know how a sardine feels. Dolphins chase sardines, I've got seaweed chasing me. Uh, the, you've got to take votes on quips. Do, <laughs> do we think this is a good use of a quip? <laughs> I, 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 I like how calculated it was. I was, and I'm, I've got to say, given that it was a much, much better attempt than me, I'm tempted to give Simon the vote yeah. just for being able to use the quip and yeah. being able to apply the uh, I would the process. say no, but... As you, <laughs> know, <laughs> you said you used a very specific word in that statement, which was players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I technically am permitted a vote, but you know what? I will allow it. Um, two You're already out voted, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what that means for you, Simon, is you can play a cinematic. You can take a cinematic and play it for free at any point. Uh, the scene missing is the most expensive one. Yeah. You could take three dice and keep them in reserve for any point. Yeah, I think we will take the dice. At can this you stage. using the quip? Can you get a writer's point by using the quip? Um, no, you oh, okay. get writers, uh, writer's points by, by choosing to fail. Well, by failing. Um, also. Uh, it's essentially a compensation mechanism yeah. for, for failing, making the story more interesting. Um, so yeah, you can take the three dice. The other thing you can do when you're playing with more quips on the table is you could then draw the same quip to use again, which can become funnier if you just keep saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, or you can uh, just draw a new one to top up. But as it is now, you're down to two quips. I'm down to two. I have my three dice just to see... If I can survive the uh, assault of a seaweed creature that's masquerading as Mr. Anderson. Well, I'm not going to uh, make you roll for slamming the door behind you with a ding a ling a ling, um, <laughs> but Mr. Anderson smashes into the door. He doesn't go through it, instead, he sort of limpets to it and he's going <laughs> up it towards you. He seems to have lost his ability to open the door and is instead pouring at it. Yes, pouring at it slapping. with his lips and hands. Well, at this stage, which are turning increasingly webbed. This is only just beginning to register that Mr. Anderson shouldn't be in the diner. He's meant to be lost at sea. What is he doing here? When your husband was lost at sea. How yes. dare this man survive? Well, that's going a little bit far, but <laughs> yes. How dare he do this to me and survive? Yeah. So, um, well... Obviously Mrs. Anderson is going to be rather pleased, but her husband is clearly in the state and needs a tidying up and needs to be told very clearly that this is not acceptable, he should start behaving himself, and he better get himself looking more presentable than this before he goes home, otherwise he's going to be leaving a trail of... And this is basically seat. what you're saying through the door <laughs> whilst... <laughs> oh dear! He is... His wife is so worried! He isn't very responsive. Um, you can try... I'm shocked. You can try persuasion and presence. <laughs> I even made her a casserole on everything! Yes! <laughs> Wasted effort. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, no, do a command and presence if you could. I don't have command. All right, persuasion then. We'll go for persuasion. Uh, well, I don't have that either, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um. You're, you're yes, not the most socially capable. Uh, no. Could I use? I'm on the homeowners committee. I am trying to dress him down, tell him that this is a respectable town for respectable people, mm -hmm. and he is not behaving respectably. Yes. And how dare he? Definitely. I like that. Is that your trademark? That is one of my trademarks. And um, what have you got it attached to? I've got that attached to manipulation. Oh, good. Yes, go for it. Right. So trademarks will allow you an additional two dice. And if you succeed with three successes or more, this is an award-winning scene where you can take directorial control. Well, considering I have just got three dice, easy come, easy go, I'm going to put it all into this because let's see how it all goes. Okay. Wait, all the dice? All, all of them. Yeah. Oh my god. How many successes? You did get three successes. I got three successes, but only three. That's fine. That means this is an award-winning scene. Ooh. Of course. What? Stunning performance. Yes, so, so if you imagine the trailer for this movie, The Attack of the Seaweed Creatures... He's not a seaweed creature, he's a very naughty boy! Exactly, obligatory Monty Python reference. Uh, I'm now taking your award-winning scene away from oh. <laughs> Um So, you... Uh, <laughs> You get your award-winning scene. What that means is you can now exert directorial control over the scene. Uh, you can do this collaboratively, uh, or you can do it on your own. Basically, you get to decide what happens next. Right, so we've got Mr. Anderson appearing to begin to transform even more while pouring into some in the kind of sea creature. Oh. You can actually see the resemblance to how your husband looked when he was found, but if... Um, but he never made this kind of mutation. 
Well, while I'm busy berating Mr. Anderson, I notice something far more critical to the whole situation. Mr. Anderson is now currently blocking poor, innocent, special, brilliant Randy Banjo from me. Mm. And this is even more unacceptable. Mm. Um, I am declaring that there is a either a oh, it's 50s fire escape. There is a second entrance into the diner. Okay, you've got one one end, one on the other. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Sounds grand. Um, I am overcome with joy, and I'm going to head to the other entrance and enter the diner to express my admiration and probably squeeze myself slightly too close to Mr. Randy Banjo. I have. Mm, all while Mr. Anderson is slapping. Larry the Anderson off. is no longer but my primary concern. If you, what you could do is if if you do that whilst opening the front door, he may mm, miss, go uh, after him. Why yeah. don't? I assume if the door Derek hasn't Park. opened, it opens inside. So Larry's just sort of. I don't. Have so to why don't while away. he's pressing against the door, why don't I, as part of this scene, he's tried to get to you. You're my biggest fan. I do not want. Yeah, some of the you letters might die. have got a bit creepy recently. Maybe I get, maybe I should uh, get in there with my guitar and give him a bit of a whack. Well, you can, you can do that afterwards. I like okay. the, uh, I like this interplay. So you make your way round to the other entrance to the diner. Yep. Uh, Mr. Anderson completely ignores your movements. He's clearly more interested in getting out than he is at getting at you. But he's not clever enough to work out how. Doors are complicated. They are when you're mostly seaweed and. <laughs> You enter, move up to Randy Banjo. What's Randy Banjo doing? You're, uh, right now, while you can, you recognise the president of your fan club. Yeah. She sent you photos. Yeah. Many, yeah. many oh, photos. Yeah. I think we may have uh, even met before. Um, <laughs> yes, the, uh, what, during those embarrassing concerts when you only had one person watching. Uh, there was security there as well. <laughs> Just in case anyone got a bit over top. And uh, Mr. Anderson has smashed your jukebox and you can see that it's actually sheared straight through the record as well. Oh... They, 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 are not expen they are not cheap. They are not expensive. <laughs> They're not cheap, is what I meant. No. They are expensive. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use my trademark here of improvised melee massacre, which is my close combat uh, <laughs> trademark. On me? No, not on you. <laughs> on, this, on, this is how Randy Banjo greets all his fans. <laughs> Bang! I'm going to turn my wrath towards. The back of uh, Mr. Anderson. Anderson with my guitar. I'm gonna do a rock star, a, a real rock star go of it. I'm gonna smash him it's over the head. The old Fender axe. Yes. Yeah. Mo yes. Mo yes. yes. But, but with it would be, an it would be guitar. if you had a Fender. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's an acoustic guitar. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a cheap acoust acoustic guitar Born as well, market, so it's yeah. more you know. Uh, but I'm going to use my trademark improvised melee massacre to crack him over the head with my acoustic guitar. Okay. All right then, um, let's roll for it then. Right. If you go for close combat and might. Close combat two, might is three. And you have your additional two dice for using the trademark. Oh, okay, so I get seven dice in total. Okay, you could also get an award winning scene oh. at this rate. You could of course choose to fail. I no, get, you get an award winning I scene. Get the award two after this, this trailer is This scene is basically the trailer. Yes. I yeah. Thought it was a diner. <laughs> hey, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as I lift my guitar over his head, it cracks into a thousand pieces, but the strings make a wonderful sound as they do so, and I'm reminded of one of my songs. Oh. At which point. The, the, just a bit, a bit of it. Ah! In the background. <laughs> I start wailing my no, song. And what's happened is, just as you've done that and you've brained Mr. Anderson, I've opened the door <laughs> and I'm now sprayed with seaweed, mucus. Yeah, stuff. all in the face. Because I'm like, and I Randy just Banjo. avoided this <laughs> in the laboratory. And Randy Banjo's there singing in your face. I yeah, like singing it. Singing in a kind of angry way, like a. Ah, ah. I just wanted a milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> It's not one of my quips, but it feels appropriate. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that should be. Um, so in the finished game, you will actually get blind cards where you can insert your <laughs> own quips. Um, the seaweed Anderson, now that you're there, uh, and he reaches up to you, and there's a uh, his back of his head is caved in because your guitar was heavier than you think, uh. and um, he's running towards you. But his where he was at one point speaking English, he is now. 
clearly speaking something not English. Not English. <laughs> not German. It's, it's not German either. Um, <laughs> he's reaching up towards you. Right? Back there's away there's a that. look of um, there's a plea so, for help. Ooh. You do have a point in the writer's pool. You could apply bad L dubbing. I reckon we should use it. To find out because he's obviously wants something. Oh. He's going like this. He's reaching out. That means he wants something. So I reckon, I reckon, use it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mike, um, as you, used you it. yeah, as you technically speak seaweed now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't need to. How many dice do I get skill? How many dice do I get You can be responsible for the dubbing. What is Mr. Anderson saying? Mr. Anderson is talking. Although it's hard to tell because it is bad dubbing. And there's that obvious nasty lip sync failure. Yeah. yeah. It's like a it's like a Toho, you know, Godzilla yeah. movie. You know. Hello. Okay, um, I'll do the uh, I'll do the mouthing. You can yeah. do the dialogue. So it's um, <laughs> <laughs> it's now they're coming. The lights underneath the sea. Something like that. And then he kills. And him. then he yeah, yes, splatters. Oh, yes. Did we kill him? Uh, yeah. We. we. <laughs> Don't tell Miss, Mrs. Anderson, will you? We can, yeah. we can keep that a secret between us. As you, um... You can't help but feel like your tongue tastes very much like seaweed. What? I'm not surprised! <laughs> yes, you do have Mr. Anderson all over you. <laughs> Mr. Engelbert, what are you doing here this morning? I thought you were at work! Professor Engelbert, he's very sensitive. <laughs> oh, he's only Mr. Engelbert to me. He's the lovely neighbour, he's professor to those busy bodies up at the base. I that she says, I'm, I don't think I'm going to find a Tom, but everybody's clearly tagged out already. <laughs> Um, right, um, uh, no, uh, hello, Susan, um, oh, here, there. I've got a little uh, handkerchief, uh, it's just like I, that. I feel like I need a towel. Oh, if only there Several was such a thing. towels. Uh, luckily, Mavis! Uh, Mavis peers over the bar, she's very frightened by everything that's just gone on. This wasn't how she was planning out her day. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone was planning to be attacked by a seaweed monster and meet the greatest wow. living music star. Thank you. That, that My God, great. Johnny Cash! <laughs> no. no, Randy Banjo. Yes. I've been trying to get... I sent you those LPs. Have you not listened to them yet? He's a musical wunderkind. Johnny oh. Cash. I was busy. <laughs> well... You could use oh, the, I would have played it for you now, but the jukebox appears to be out of action. <laughs> Must make that happen at some other time, yes. Oh, uh, right, here's your towels. Thank you, Mavis. Can I wash myself off in your sink? Uh, yes, I, I think I need to call this in to the, yes. to the cops. Uh, <laughs> it, Mr. Anderson, why is, he, why is he bleeding green all over the floor? <laughs> oh, no. Well, Actually, I don't think that was Mr. Anderson. People aren't made of seaweed. It was when he came in. He's <laughs> changed since he came in. It's like he's changing. She looks at oh. you. Blech. Wash it all off even more. Spit it out. You just spat on my floor, Professor. No, in the sink. Oh. In the sink. I just say I was washing my myself off. Yes. <laughs> I, just in case I have any bits of seaweed. Mr. Can, Anderson. Can, 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 can I? Can I make anyone anything? I'm feeling quite um, shaken. Um, I'll have a straw. I have a strange now. craving for a milkshake. Oh no. <laughs> Two milk. Oh, I've got a bit of brandy. We could add to the bottom. <laughs> She slowly makes the milkshakes, clearly quite shaken by this, and the fact that Anderson is still on her floor. Nothing a mop won't fix. No, she's clearly uh, committed to making your milkshakes before she calls the police, which gives you the opportunity to make a plan of action if you have one. What we took me to happened? Go. I bashed his brains in with the guitar. I oh. saw that I graphically even... two feet in front of my face. Susan, I think... I'm oh. gonna have to go. I, I can't be here. I'm gonna get done for killing a. Well, you didn't Another. kill another. It's a pile of seaweed, not a real person. You don't have ah, nothing to worry about. Now we know why. <laughs> why he moves from town to town. It's nothing to worry about. I was here. I saw everything. You merely hit an aggressive pile of seaweed. There's nothing to worry about. I don't know why that seaweed was doing that. Perhaps the military base has something to do with it and needs a stern telling off at the next committee meeting. Or perhaps you could write them a strongly worded letter. A strongly worded letter! From the President of the Tenants Association. From the... I am signed by the Under Secretary as well. That's you. This is unacceptable! 
I kind of feel like I'm probably writing a letter to myself at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the military base has been entirely out of order. We can't have things like this happening. This is a good town. I just wish there was some way I could deny that that is probably the case, but... <laughs> so what we you almost hurt a, a, a musical super... How would that look if the As world's you're... news suddenly put up news that we had killed the greatest star of our time. As, as you're bickering in your defence of Randy Banjo, <laughs> the murderer, <laughs> uh, you see two other figures approaching the diner from the cliff steps. Oh, and dear. they are the... Oh, Mr. Mr. Gunderson wet, yeah, Mr. Wet, Smith. wet, slappy figures of uh, Smith and Gunderson at large. Oh, Esquire. <laughs> Right. Uh, and they look about as devolved as Mr. Anderson did before he, his head was stoved in. Oh. And now you have no guitar. I don't have a guitar. Oh. Right. Is Larry blocking the door or is he well within the uh, You could climb over him. Well, there's another way in anyway. Well, that, yeah. yeah. The other way in is the cliff side where they're oh. approaching. I feel uh, like possibly pushing something in front of that and going out the other door might be sensible. It may be a, may be a good occasion. Well, it depends. Do you want to be hemmed in here? Or do you want to flee? Um, uttering a wise crack quip at this point might allow you to use a scene missing. I think we want to exit rapidly, personally. I'm going to use it's a quip. <gasps> I'm going to walk towards them and say, well now, what oyster did you come out of? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> I, it's not probably the way we were thinking you would end up using as Randy Banjo you would end up using that quick. <laughs> but I'm liking it. Yeah, okay, the players have voted in your favour. Does that mean I get to put one of them? Uh, no, you get to use one no. of those ah. for free. Yeah, you Ooh. get to use one of those for free, or right. you get to save three dice. Oh, if you do it? use one of those for free, yeah. um, you could use scene missing to um, completely jump to wherever you want to. You could use cheap set to blast through a wall and just flee <laughs> in the other back direction. Diner. Yeah, it's without true. having to guys? wade through dead Anderson. What do you think? Oh, I, I think... Either cheap sets just go straight through the wall, or the wall just sort of falls down. Yeah, yeah. alright, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Let's cheap set it. Yeah, that's shoddy American craftsmanship. Let's yeah. blast the... Uh... Apologies to all the American viewers, I'm sure your craftsmanship is wonderful. As are your military bases, your diners, your seaweed and your fisher folk. <laughs> we'll use cheap set and what we'll do is um, blast a hole through the glass doors but they're kind of cut out rather than... So you basically tear through it like yeah, it's like a it's paper. Yeah, like it's paper, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. The characters, you don't won't question this. You'll basically wade through yeah. the, the uh, paper frame of this coastal town diner. Yeah. As it... it Maybe you've always wondered why it was constructed like this by Crystal, who of course isn't here, it's Mavis. Yeah. Uh, but now you don't need to because it's all been torn down and yeah. will probably have to be replaced by glass That's at some point. Thing. You flee... Deeper into town, maybe to rouse the sheriff. Yep. Uh, as unfortunately, you leave Mavis behind because you didn't make an effort to save her. Just, just as Gunderson and Smith <laughs> advance on the centre of the diner, looking for those glorious, glorious she cherries. Can, she can come with she us. has enough milkshakes to make to probably keep true. True. That's true. She does have a lot of milkshakes. And we are going to cut it there. Um, that is an example of how they came from beneath the sea. Might go. Uh, the, a lot of <laughs> yeah exactly a lot of nonsense uh, a few quips flying fast sometimes they require preparedness sometimes they require spontaneity uh, we saw some of the skills and attributes being used as we saw trademarks and there's more than that besides in the game itself including tropes stunts all kinds of things uh, that are essentially plug and play you use them if you want don't use them if you don't but this game is a complete game as repeat as said at the beginning of the video it's on kickstarter on the 18th of december and i hope you check out the full product thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to the players for taking part thank you <laughs> well that's it the intermission is now over we will return you to your feature film thank you very much for watching and do check our kickstarter out launching on december the 18th running through until january we would love to see you there and see you take part all the best